Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am so honored today to be interviewing Tatiana Tofanetto. She is here from Brazil. We met in Florida. Um, we met first in 2018. Right when here. I, for, right here in Orlando. And I fell in love with her dolls and I have been slowly collecting them ever since. So the video before this, I unboxed her latest masterpiece, which is Bella Spring. And she graciously has agreed to do an interview with me so you guys can learn more about her as an artist. So thank you so much, Tatiana, for agreeing to this. I thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I am so excited to learn more about you, and I know the audience is too. So my first question that I love to ask people is, what was your favorite doll when you were a child? Well, I think the, the, the doll that comes to my mind when I think about a favorite doll is Barbie. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Of course, I played with a lot of dolls before I met Barbie. Mm -hmm. uh, but I remember I didn't like to be the the mom, the mother uh -huh. of the dolls. Right. I played with them with my friends, and they all all like it to be the mother and to take care and to give the milk to the dolls. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it. Then I, when I I found Barbie, Barbie uh -huh. oh my God, I can actually be the doll like I... most of the girls. <laughs> thought the same way right so that's the, the first doll I have in mind that's that's <laughs> so cool because that is something about Barbie is a, a much different type of doll than a baby doll because I'm the same way I like Barbie I like to dress her up and I didn't want to be the mother the same mm -hmm. kind of thing and I think that's kind of reflected in your work you know you've got these beautiful fashion doll, dolls that display these beautiful fashions. Um, so my next question for you is, what made you decide to become a doll maker? Well, I, I always loved dolls and I loved drawing human figures since very young. Mm -hmm. um, then I think after I got married and I have my, had my first baby, I wanted to be a stay-home mom. Mm -hmm. And then at that time, I started, you know, feeling that I wanted to get back to art and start drawing again and painting again. But then I realized I actually wanted to create dolls because that was a passion, that Barbie from the childhood. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to start making dolls. And that was a perfect time because I was at home with my son, my little son. And then I started making some uh, researches and learning about the creation of the doll. At that time, it was very hard uh, mm -hmm. because the internet was not so popular right, like, right. like it is today. And then it started this mm -hmm. way. So were you formally trained in art or did you, were you self-taught? Like it sounds like you went on the internet and kind of looked for some resources to... Yes, I, I say that I'm self-taught because mm -hmm. I wanted to study art mm -hmm. when I finished um, when I finished the the first part. Of, I don't remember the name. When I went to college, I wanted to study art, but because it was in another city, I had to travel and stay far from my family. Right. Then I decided to stay in my city and study mm -hmm. what was available at that time. It was computer science. Oh, and then that's what I did. But I wanted to to uh, study art, and I started start, started studying by myself, and that's how I started. That's really interesting because I also studied computer science in college. I did, and I hated it, <laughs> so I don't do it now. But it was like I studied it, and then I didn't end up doing anything with uh -huh. it. So. The same. Well, we're very grateful that you're doing this <laughs> and not computer science now because you make such amazing creations. Thank One you. of the things that I really admire about you is you started a school for doll makers. Can you tell me a little bit about that program and kind of how it has evolved and how your students have learned through that? Yeah, sure. So. I remember it was so difficult for me to find uh, really how to make dolls and to find materials and to find someone who could really help me learning. So I had to learn everything by myself. And when I started creating dolls, really, uh, people in my country got crazy. They wanted to learn too. They wanted to know how I was creating dolls. 
And then I, I had this feeling, I had this wish to, to teach people. So first I had my first online course in 2010. It was very simple. We didn't have online videos. We only had PDF. So people right. would go to the course and would learn from PDF. Wow. And then after some time with the evolution of YouTube and videos, then I created the online school, uh, the doll makers school in Brazil. So it's very nice to be able to teach people in many places. I see the, the beautiful work of students, and that's so beautiful to see. I'm so proud of them. And I love following your students. So I've you you have put your students, shared your students' work, and I love following them and seeing their progress as they, you know, from their first doll to their latest doll, they're, they're doing amazing work. And you have students all over the world, don't you? Yes. Actually, the English course uh, is a little paused at the moment okay. because I need to make some changes. But yes, some people here in the United States mm -hmm. too learning. But it's a little bit more difficult because you have to... Uh, in translation, it's mm -hmm. not very easy when you translate from Portuguese to English because... There are different words, so you must be, uh, there's a lot of work involved. Plus, it's probably very technical language when you're talking yeah, about how to. Technical. Yeah, so uh -huh. that makes it a little more difficult. But I, I just think that's so inspiring to me to see you sharing that knowledge with other aspiring doll makers. I think it's incredible that you've done that. So what I want to know now is what was the first doll you ever created? The first doll uh, was Henny in uh, cold porcelain. Oh, wow. Cold porcelain. And Henny, in, uh, in honor of Henny Sarit, do you know her? I don't. Who is that? She is, uh, I don't, if I'm not wrong, she's a French artist. Uh -huh. She passed away, unfortunately. Uh -huh. And she created beautiful fairies in uh -huh. air dry clay. Wow. And I purchased her book. Oh, wow. When I... Uh, before I I was already creating uh, right. no no it was the first time I was I wanted to create dolls mm -hmm. and I had the material in Brazil which is cold porcelain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I saw her book and I told and I thought well I think I can create this doll in cold porcelain and I started using her book and I remember I went to her forum wow. we had a forum with uh -huh. students and, and she knew I was creating a doll from her book with cold porcelain mm -hmm. she said oh my god are you doing this is it possible because oh wow she had no idea it was possible because wow. cold porcelain is not so uh easy to work with right. in creating the tales like mm -hmm. and the ones we we want to to see in dolls mm -hmm. so she was very impressed wow and it was my first doll and i gave the doll her name mm -hmm. in, in her honor i'll have to look her up and because that's really cool <laughs> That is such an amazing, that's such a meaningful doll to me. Meaningful like, doll. And she's with me. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And she will be with me. <laughs> For, right. Forever. Um, so of all the dolls you've ever made, do you have a favorite one that you've made? Yes, I do. It's Monasso. Oh. Monasso. Wow. The one with the butterfly. She has the butterfly. Yeah. yeah. What about her makes her your favorite? It's about the 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 meaning of the butterfly, which is the transition I've been, I've been mm -hmm. facing, I've been living mm -hmm. and she's about transformation. So it's, it's, she, she, she's really the, the representation of transformation mm -hmm. in my personal life and also my career as a doll maker. So speaking of that transition, you have been, been known under your business name, Doll Essence, but you're transitioning to be known under your your name as Tatiana Tofanetto under your actual name as a with your artistry and your logo is a butterfly so tell us more about why you've chosen to do that transition and what it means for your doll making it's funny I said transition <laughs> right but it's I always say that but mm -hmm. it's the the right word actually is integration okay okay because uh I had this feeling that I had to to, to create, to, to make the transition from one job to other job. Mm -hmm. Because uh, about five years ago, I started studying alchemy, mm -hmm. which is a passion, which is a calling. I really believe so. And alchemy is all about nature. 
So mm -hmm. then I, I, I thought I should uh, leave the, the, the doll career, the doll making career to focus on my alchemy mm -hmm. career, is, which is working as a therapist, mm -hmm. helping people through nature. Mm -hmm. And then I started realizing that it's actually an integration of both jobs. Yeah. And which is Mona taught me. Right. Wow. <laughs> so I was creating Mona and I was only started, I was starting studying alchemy and I, as I was creating her and I had no idea I was creating my own transformation, my own integration. Wow. And then I think this doll is really the, like, the, the ultimate meaning of this integration because now I'm really working with nature as I create dolls. Mm -hmm. As I work with nature to help people as a therapist, I want also to work with nature to create dolls. That's the... That's, that is meaning. so, that really resonates with me. And the reason why is if you watch the unboxing of this doll, when I held the doll, I'm not going to hold her now because she's so beautifully posed for the mm -hmm. camera. But this doll actually, you hold her and she has an energy and you feel the energy of the materials and you feel the energy of the passion that she's poured into the doll and you feel the energy of the collaborative elements of the doll. It, the doll really has an energy. It's hard to explain that <laughs> over camera. And dolls are therapeutic for people like me. For me, a doll is a very therapeutic outlet. Like it, it's, it's just something, you know, if I'm having a bad day or I'm not feeling well, you know, I can hold a doll and it, it is like a therapy for me. You just feel that good energy. So that is so That's true. fascinating about the, the integration there. I, I love that. That's, mm -hmm. that's really incredible. And about the name that I, I didn't answer, Doll Essence. Uh, I don't want to people think that I'm leaving doll S and that I'm changing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I may use the doll S okay. again okay. because okay. I think it's more related to a collection uh, okay. like resin dolls and gotcha. commercial dolls than now the less limited. To... Right. Yeah. Gotcha. So we can expect to see your name for the limited, exactly. the very, like these kind of. Um, more it, nature, working yes. with nature, so you have all right. the butterfly, right. my name. And then the other dolls under the doll essence. Yes. That's the dolls, mm -hmm. the other three dolls that I have are the doll essence dolls. And this is my first Tatiana doll. So yeah. I love her so much. <laughs> she is just, I've only had her for like an hour now, but she's just incredible. Mm -hmm. um, so my next question is where can people follow you and learn more about your work? Okay, so I have this Instagram, which is a long time account, Doll Essence. Mm -hmm. And now I created the Tatiana Tofaneto Instagram account, which is more focused on these kind of dolls, porcelain. And also my website, which is my name, www.tatianatofaneto.com. And I'll link that stuff below. And you can also join, you, it's through your mailing list, I think, is where I saw, first yeah, saw... Bella Spring. So make sure to join the mailing list so you get up to date information when it comes out. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share today that I haven't asked you? No, oh, I think it's so, so beautiful and complete. <laughs> I, I just, I'm just so honored to be able to, to talk to you today. And <laughs> oh, I do have one more question. Sure. So of all the doll making mediums that you've worked with, what is your favorite? Porcelain. Porcelain. Yes, porcelain. It's what about porcelain makes it your favorite? I think it's nature first because I think porcelain is all about nature. And also uh, because it's a process that I can make everything with my hands and by myself. Right. Resin. I know resin. Some artists who create the, uh, resin dolls, they can do it all by themselves. Right. Of course, they do. But in my case, living in Brazil, I had to send my prototype to other country yeah. and wait for the resin to come. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see and I didn't know how the the resin process was. Mm -hmm. But with porcelain, I yeah. it's, it's all about me. It's all my creation the, really. the thing with resin too like there are a few artists who make their own but resin is a very hazardous material and so you have to yeah. really have the proper you know 
in the idea that you that the dolls in porcelain they will right. surpass your life yes they will you'll be here and they will they're heirlooms they will they're not gonna they're not gonna yellow they're not mm -hmm. gonna the paint's not gonna come off you know it's it's really it's really just i'm just gonna touch her little hand it's just such a cool material i just <laughs> love it so much well tatiana i really appreciate you taking the time to talk Thank with me you. today I am going to link all of her information below you guys so you can follow her. I do want to let you know, if you didn't watch the other video, there are three, as of the making, as of the filming of this video, there are three Bella Springs left. She is limited to six, so there are only three left available. One of them is going to live with me. <laughs> so anyway, um, just thank you so much. Is there anything else? I think we've covered it all, haven't we? I think so. So complete. So thanks everyone for watching. Make sure you go follow her if you're not already so following. so much for the opportunity, Alison. And we will see you guys later. Bye. Bye-bye. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons from Patreon. Lindsay S., Leah W., Doreen Z., Janice H., Mercedes W., Cindy K., Bear Sunflower, Diane B., Kelly L., Shorna R., Stephanie W., Shalane C., Penny P., Louisa's Knitnacks, Marty G., Lynn, Lynn P., and Cindy L. Your support means so much to me and helps me continue bringing you great Dolly content. For more information on how you can become a supporter of this channel, check the link in the video description. Thank you.